This is a journal that was created from twigs out of my yard and some paper that I have made. I think it is one of my fa most favorite projects that I have worked on. It was very organic, very rustic, and very enjoyable to work on. I wrapped these twigs with a cordage and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results, so let me share it with you. My name is Peg, and I call my channel 2 Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment to subscribe and join me as I put up additional content, which that notification bell will let you know when it comes. So here are the twigs and oak leaves that I pulled from the backyard. Here are some of the... the prints that I'm using or some of the paper that I'm using. I'm using a gallon tea bag, some paper that I've made, some tea stain paper, some actual echo dyed paper here, um, some paper that I made from creating my own pulp and defining the paper with a decal and frame. So that is the type of paper that I'm going to utilize for this project. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of determine a, a good size. And I'm using this tear ruler to tear that paper into the actual size that I'm going to utilize. And I use my gallon tea bag as my template, if you will. I wanted to get everything so that it would work with this gallon tea bag. And I am loving the gallon tea bags. I, you'll see me use them quite a bit. So my family is going to be drinking quite a bit of tea. This is Echo Dye paper that I made earlier this year. And I'm using that tear ruler just to rip this in to the appropriate size to use within the signature. And I'm defining by eye the area that I want to use and then just tearing. There's no measuring going on here. I'm just laying the tea bag down or laying, you know, an already sized piece of paper down and just tearing to that size. And this is the process that I went through to create the signature. I'm going to create three of these and we'll utilize three signatures within this finalized book. And there's the first one. And there's all three of them. I have them put together very simple, torn paper, paper I created earlier, and I'm going with that. And now I want to put some of the oak leaves onto the press to get the oak leaf printed on some of this paper to kind of pull everything together. We're using the oak twigs and I brought in some of the oak leaves and I am putting them on the press and now I am just using them as a stencil on the paper and now that print that's left on the gel press I'm also going to use to press onto that paper. Didn't really come off on that tea bag. So I'm going to pull it off on, on just an additional piece of paper. Now I'm just, it, it got a little dry on me, so I'm laying some iridescent white down to see if I can pull that. There we go. I can pull it up now. And I'm just going to continue to lay color down to the paper, and I'm sticking with the the leaf theme, and I will continue to print leaves, and I'm pulling out around the outside edge. I'm not really using those prints at all in this book. 
but I'm using that to create the masked off area is what I'm using to create the print on the signature. And then the paint that's left on the leaf that I use to mask off, I'm using that as a stencil as well. Now I, I am just putting some of this quinacridone green in with that raw umber just to add a little green into this project because there's quite a bit of green in that cordage so I want to bring that the actual color of the leaf in if you will and you can see I'm using the leaf two ways one is a mask one is a stencil Just mixing the raw umber and the, the green together. And just the same process over and over again. And all of these little pages within these signatures, each one is going to have some type of little leaf print on it. There. So we're getting some interesting pages and I'm not using any of the ones the first pull that where it leaves that white spot where we've masked that off those I've all set aside I didn't use any of those inside the booklet I'll come back and do something with those later but For this particular project, I just want to use the leaf as a stencil and then use that ghost print. So there, we'll pull those. And then we'll use, turn back around and use that leaf as a stencil on it. So I think you get the the gist of this. I don't need to bore you with more of this, but I wanted to put enough in here that it was kind of clear what I was trying to do and what I was doing. So now that we have all the pages printed, let's work on that cover or the spine if you will and that spine is going to be my twigs so I'm just cut each of these twigs to the length of my signatures and I'm going to wrap this cordage around that twig And I want to make sure that I have some at the end. I, I didn't leave enough of a tail there and I have to have a tail so I can tie it in a square knot so that it stays. And I, I want to leave a little tail on here. I like that little kind of messy look. I'm just tying that in a square knot. And I'm going to do that to all three of the twigs. And I'm going to sew these twigs into my signature. There's number two completed. And now let's wrap the final one. Let's 
speed that up just a little bit. Get this guy wrapped and tied off. And now all three of my twigs are wrapped and ready to be utilized or bound to my spine. So I'm going to measure the, the center and about a quarter inch from each end. And I'm using this um, craft pick to just poke the hole through. I have it clipped off to kind of hold everything in place. Some waxed thread that I will be utilizing to sew this signature. I'm going to thread this needle up. And I pulled my thread three times the length of my book. And I'm just coming up through the center over the top of that twig. And then back through the end hole over the top of the twig. And kind of get it secure in place. And then I will come back up through the center once again and just redefine over that twig or go over that twig once more. So I'm just looping that, looping it in and then back through that last hole and over the twig. And then we will tie this off, get it tight and tie it in a double knot. And there it is securely now on the edge of that signature. So we will do this on each signature, just tying that um, twig onto the end or the spine of each signature. So three times we'll do the same thing. And just use a craft pick to punch our holes. Three times the length, thread up the needle through the center hole and over the top of that twig, back through that top hole over the top of the twig. And we'll come back through the center once again, back through the final hole over the top, and then we'll tie that off in a square knot in the center. So it's just this, it's a very simple sewn signature, but we're doing that on each each signature and then we're going to bind them all together with a different process kind of like the coverless books you've seen me make. And there's that final final knot. So there are two of the three completed. And we'll finish up that final one. There's all three of them together. And now let's bind these three together with a piece of fabric that we're going to pull through each of these twigs. So we're going to pull it through the spot in between the signature and the twig. And we're just going to thread it in there. So this is a piece of uh, canvas that I have dyed or stained with tea. And I have cut that to the width that will fit between those two holes that we poked into that signature. And I've just threaded this fabric underneath the twig. And we're going to join each of these signatures together by continuing to thread that. So we have it through the first one. Now we'll go through the second. And 
and there are two of the signatures now together. And I'm checking to make sure that I'm keeping them even on the front here. And now this final signature, we'll thread that canvas through just like this coverless book. That's what I'm using as my guide. So I wanted to show that to you real quick. If you remember when we made that. If you didn't, I'll link it up above. Or I'll actually link it on the end screen. And there. Now that will hold that securely together if we glue these pieces of canvas down on the front and back. So let's just make sure they're through there. Good and tight. Even. Now I'm going to pull in some glitter glue and we will give that a good coating of glue and get these glued into place and we'll let that dry, set that aside and, and let that dry. There we go. I had to take a moment and unclog my glue. There, now I flip that over and cut these off to the appropriate width. I'm going to fray those ends, pulling some of those threads out so there's a little frayed in there. I tried to tear it, but I couldn't get it to tear, so I just cut it and just frayed it. And there, now that little booklet is together. So we shall let that dry and then figure out what we're going to do for the cover. I want to add another twig on the front of the book. And I saw this process. I saw Susan Branch do this in one of her videos. And I'll link her channel below because she does some wonderful things. Very... Um, nature oriented and she was tying some of her threads together, some of her remnant threads together like you see me doing here and then wrapping them around what she was referring to as a spirit stick. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to duplicate that and f utilize that as the cover. So I'm just taking all of those threads out of that fabric that I used out of that canvas and I'm just wrapping it, tying it into one long string and wrapping it very messily around the stick, leaving all of those ends where I tied it together. And I am just going to continue until I am out of thread here. And that is going to be the focal point on the cover of this book. Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that cool? I like that a lot. So I'm pulling out some cheesecloth. I'm going to just play with a little bit of cheesecloth. A little bit of uh, additional canvas, I think. Just kind of trying to figure out what I want to use here to collage on the front of this book. And like I've said before, it's all a matter of just playing until something catches your interest. And I like this piece of tea stained canvas. 
So I think it goes well with everything else in this little booklet. So I'm going to glue that on and add, eh, let's see what else we have here. Another little tea bag maybe to bring the tea bag into the front. Let's just fold that up. Add some cheesecloth over the top of it. And I think I I think I like the way that looks. And I'm just gonna cut that so I don't have so much thickness. Cover it with some cheesecloth. And I think we're getting closer. And I'm just randomly looking at things that I have. And I will eventually rest on something here. So I think we're ready to glue now. And this is a piece of my dad's handwriting and it, it came from a letter that he wrote and it was actually in the address on an envelope and that actually says Kansas, which is where I am from, where my roots are. And I thought, well, that's a nice little handwritten word from, from my father's letter to my mother in the 40s. I made it copies of a bunch of those. And that's what I am kind of using in my collaging is his, his handwriting. So there, now I'm just going to tie some charms onto these strings and I have made some paper beads. So I want to use those as well. And in the ends of those paper beads, I'm taking some of those leftover threads, just tucking those down inside there, gluing them in, and giving those kind of that messy, messy look as well. So that organic, messy kind of feel. So that finishes up this book. And I am really liking the way that it turned out. And I am coming back with more of those threads and just gluing those onto this cover to add a bit more color. I'm happy with the way that looks. The pages are all printed with the leaf print. It's all organic paper that has been either echo dyed from my backyard or pulp created from my scraps and made. So this completes the project and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I hope you like it. I I as I said before, it's it's one of one of my favorite projects that I've done. It just felt very good to use the things out of my yard. So this is the finished piece. You can see the paper bead here at the bottom with the little thread sticking out of it. That's the finished cover. The spine with the cordage, kind of that messy tattered look. And you can see the twigs sticking out here. And this is all very reflective of that oak tree in my backyard. So I hope you enjoyed. Again, my name is Peg, Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Hope you'll take a moment and subscribe. And to those of you who are frequent flyers, I appreciate you being here and always appreciate your comments. Bye for now.